I'm Michelle Leslie and I live and breathe interior design. What makes my spaces unique is that every element is either individually sourced with the project in mind or handmade by an artist to perfectly fit that environment. That's the difference with my designs. Interiors made by hand and made by time, by artisans and craftsmen that bring their own stories to the pieces that they make. One of my personal favorites is Pretty Beach House. Pretty Beach House is a four bedroom private hotel located in the heart of the Australian bushland in Kilcairn, New South Wales. The owner, John, has a very personal connection to this property. Well, I used to come here, kill care, this area, two weeks every year. Been coming here for 76 years. And we'd come up here with my two sisters, and mum and dad. And I just fell in love with the place. Just thought how cool it would be to, just to be here at kill care. You know? This whole property was burnt by an electrical fire and a bushfire. So um, there was nothing here when we started. It was really devastating looking at it. Bricks were melting, you know, st the stones were melting. There wasn't any sign of any furniture, so God knows what the intensity was. When it burned down, everyone was really upset. I felt really sad for John because I knew how much he loved it here. Yeah, I forget where I was, but I got a phone call. Pretty Beach is gone. What do you mean, gone? And it was just horrifying. You don't see this, but as you were coming up that drive, that whole drive was black. If you told me that a couple of years later, would all be green again, you think, no. This is black forever, mate. John called me and said, um, my favourite property's burnt down, where are you? And I said, I'm overseas, and he said, well, can you get back immediately? <laughs> I want you to start rebuilding it. So for me, it was really important to ensure that in the rebuild, there were multiple elements that he was familiar with. Each space I design starts as a blank canvas. I sit there and I close my eyes and I listen to the sounds and I start to think about the people that are going to live and or experience or come into the space. And then I can start to see colour and shapes and form. That visual palette never leaves. The mud bricks had come from the previous property as well, so I thought that that was pretty important. And mud bricks are really beautiful because they come from the earth and so they feel like they were of this property. They were dried outside for three to four months and they tell their own story because they had little animal footprints in them and eucalyptus leaves and the guys were going to get rid of those and I said to please not because they're going to be my favourite ones so we placed them in really prominent places so you could see the narrative of the story that they lived outside, were dried outside and then we brought them in here. I like to look at the people I work with as artists, whether my builder, my blacksmith, or the men that collect the timber pieces. They are artists just because they don't hold a paintbrush or are looked at as the general understanding of what an artist is. They are all such amazing artists with their craft. They know exactly straight away with their eye that that bridge post is gonna be loved by somebody. Somehow we decided that a bridge was a great idea. The original bridge that was built from Thebine to Kingaroy has been um, heritage listed, but there were 68 other bridges built along that railway track, which were all decommissioned, and we got one of them. Most of them have got these painted marks on them, which are original, which I just found really beautiful. So we made sure that they were turned around into the room. The posts aren't actually structural, we just made it to look like they ran up throughout the building, so they're kind of suspended from the walls. The beauty of Pretty Beach is to tell people where things came from and, you know, it might look really nice, but once you hear a story about it and where it came from and its travel to get here, and then how the designer designed it into the building, then how the builders built it into the building, I just think you go, wow, and you look at it totally differently. The brass at Pretty Beach House is really beautiful because we never finish it with anything to stop the patination process. When it arrives, it's really quite bright and shiny and it very quickly ages and discolours. And that's one of the most magical things is to watch a piece of metal change to the environment it's in. Things only happen once, that person was only here once. That, 
that was happened once, that red wine spill happened once, like, you know, wipe it up and leave it there. I saw a light of Christopher's, I think it might have been in a magazine, and I was like, where is that from? I'd never seen anything as beautiful before. I just loved that they had crystals in them because I think crystals bring a beautiful energy into a space, whether you believe in that stuff or not. Christopher uses quartz crystals in his designs and I love having elements that are timeless and connected to the earth in my work. So we've got two more Christopher Boots lights down here and the reason that we chose to bring them down was because there's so many hard surfaces down here and I really like to soften spaces with circles so they look like they're floating at night time and they're really beautiful. I like to introduce as many different types of textures into a space that fit cohesively together as possible because I think it makes the place really interesting. So we're coming down from the heart of Pretty Beach House down into the dining room. This is a custom piece of petrified wood in brass. It's a servery that we had made in Indonesia to fit perfectly around this post. This is a mirror we had made in Byron Bay. The placement of this was really important so that uh, from wherever you sat within the room, there was always a reflection from outside being able to be seen by all the guests. I don't stop working, so whenever I'm away, I'm always finding things and always shipping things home. I'm like the heaviest traveler on the planet. <laughs> Some of my favourite things in this room are the Japanese tea chests, the light from Egypt. The brass ollies were found on a trip to India and we brought a couple back for the sinks in the bathrooms. There's really beautiful little handprints in them as well that you'll see. I decided to come up and live here for a few months while we're at the start of the build, uh, just because I really like to to be in the environment that I'm building and it was such a massive responsibility to get this right. I love the people that I work with. The builders build my vision. Without them, none of this would have happened because they, they built everything that I saw in my head and sometimes I get really excited about things and they go, oh no, she's having another idea. <laughs> they do such an incredible job. I could walk into a room and tell you, oh, Michelle Leslie did that and did I, Michelle could walk in the room and say, John will love that. Well, John will really hate that. For this project, my intention was to connect John's personal history with the property to the land that surrounds it and to create a whole new experience for the guests. And I believe we achieved that. I just get a problem, I give it to Michelle, I don't have a problem. <laughs> and it really does work like that. And, and Michelle knows why now my taste so well or I've improved hers, one or the other, <laughs> that everything Michelle has done, I just walk in and go, fantastic. A little bit of Michelle in them, a little bit of magic, all that magic, magic, magic. The end result here, I love it. Like, I totally love it. This is one of my favourite projects for so many reasons. And, and I really love that so many people contributed to making this really special. Um, and everybody put their all that put their all into designing and curating the best possible experience here and and it's shown in the awards that it's won and you know well, none of that belongs to just me or just to John. It belongs to everyone that contrib contributed to this project.